Hello and welcome to Down to Earth. Today on the show, we've trekked down to Purushwadi, a village a few hours away from Mumbai, and we're here in order to meet two entrepreneurs, Ainir and Uday, who set up a company called Grassroots. What does Grassroots do? It helps to promote rural tourism, empowering and completely changing the lives of communities in some of these villages. Let's find out a little bit more about it. Purushwadi is a hill station a couple of hours from Nasik. You'll have no reception here, no electricity and no noise. It's serene and rustic and pristine. You can overlook the entire valley and the campsites are by the river. Enjoy homegrown fresh and extremely healthy food. Grassroots is synonymous with Ainir Pinero. Ainir has been involved in the social sector since he graduated and he has never looked back, surviving at times on love and fresh air. He worked with several NGOs before starting Grassroots in an attempt to create sustainable livelihoods. That's where Uday comes in as well. A recent addition to the Grassroots team and a graduate from Harvard Business School Uday and Ainir are together giving Grassroots the financial shape it needs and envisioning a scale that will help it to reach new heights. Tourism is a great uh, economic multiplier. In fact, the government of India gives a 2.1 multiplier effect with regards to so every 100 rupees which comes into a local economy with tourism, uh, it re uh, replicates it with uh, 2.1 effect. Uh, so it's a great economic means of development. But the challenge with tourism is that it's also a great exploiter of communities, socially, environmentally, culturally. So the concept of community-managed tourism uh, is trying to get the economic aspects of tourism at the same time with the community in charge of ownership, management and running. Uh, you tend to balance off the ill effects of tourism. Well, then when you first uh, met uh, Ainir and actually discovered this whole concept, what did you think of it? Because rural tourism is also a space you've been interested in and hasn't been explored too much uh, in India yet. No, you're absolutely right. I left banking to actually work on a business plan to do rural tourism. And my concept was slightly different because I wanted to own the whole product and the whole experience. And over two years of exploring it, and I had several chats with Ainir while writing the business plan, I realized that there's significant operational capital challenges to the whole model that I had. So then I actually came here and, well, the overarching concept behind rural tourism was that people come to India, they'll go and see the Taj, they'll go to Agra, they'll go to Goa, they'll come to Bombay, yeah. have a big night out. But no one really takes the time to immerse themselves in the true India. Most of India is in the villages. And this is something that even me, after having lived in Bombay for all my life, hadn't really experienced rural India. So I came on one of the grassroots tours and I absolutely loved it. We were right here chopping wood and then we went up and had lunch at their house and I was like, this is something that everyone needs to experience. And it is beautiful. I mean, we've, we spent the morning uh, walking around and, uh, you know, the scenery it, and it's so down to earth and the people are so friendly and accepting and hospitable. Uh, but I'm sure when you first came up with this idea and brought it to the village, uh, there must have been some amount of resistance that the villagers, did they understand the concept? Did they understand that this is something that's actually meant to empower them and not really take away from them? So, uh, in order to break these barriers, and, and the thing is, again, uh, I don't look like a villager. Like I look like I'm the reason why there is poverty in the villages. Uh, so, the entire intervention using uh, the ancient technique of rapo building, the NGO Watershed Organizing Trust incubated uh, the concept of grassroots and introduced us into this, uh, into this village, uh, Purushwari. Uh, it was because of their rapo building with the community. They've enabled us to meet with the decision makers and with the trust that they have had with the community. The community was at least willing to listen. But the challenge always was, because it's a new livelihood, it's because it's, it's something new, uh, very few people were actually able to come up front door. Uh, it's a massive risk for that they have to take, uh, because for communities which are such a nature, which are predominantly living below poverty line, uh, looking at new livelihoods is extremely risky. So initially we worked in this particular village with something like three families in the first uh, four or five months. And uh, today, uh, out of the 109 households, we work with over 80 of them uh, on an ongoing basis. Yeah, so it, it, it does take uh, some time uh, to actually build uh, rapport and trust with the community. Yes. How much would they have earned before grassroots came along? Just from their usual, uh, you know, means of uh, earning a living, and that's predominantly agriculture, I'm assuming, as, yes. as well as other 
perhaps smaller uh, businesses. Yes. How much would they have earned then? So uh, a village of this nature, and we did baseline studies over here, uh, earned uh, then in 2006 uh, was around 12,000 to 16,000 rupees per household per year. Uh, the income predominantly coming, this is a rough estimate from, uh, from agriculture and then migration. So they would actually migrate off and work. So this is, was the average household income. Uh, right now we are looking at a 35% increase in average household income uh, coming in through tourism. So villagers over here can stay in the village itself. They don't have to migrate off. They have an opportunity to be able to stay inside over here and earn that amount of livelihood uh, in this village. So this particular village itself, we've created um, roughly around 8,000 8, to 9,000 employment days last year itself. Uh, and that's something that we're looking to, uh, to, to build up in each and every village that we go across. Hira Bai is one of the village women who has got means to employment through grassroots. She prepares meals in her home for tourists. The village men also work as guides. Tattare works for grassroots and also trains guides in nearby villages. हमाला बरेत गाइड हाउस के पर आनी को कैंचे साथी रोजंदारी गांव तक मेला लगले आनी ना पहले बिक्षा था बरेत पे की कि आमी सेता मधे पन पानी उतलन पा कई ऐसे सुधारित पद्धति जिसे दी कर दो आनी पावन इसी वंजा हमाला वो एक टिक पन फायदा होते कि आता माला पहले ना हिंदी पन बोला ले इतनो थी इंग्लिश तो समझता इत Grassroots doesn't come in and take over the local community. In fact, it involves them in its entire process. Involvement of the local community is in fact crucial to grassroots working. How did you stumble upon this particular village? Okay. Was it a process uh, or was it, uh, you know, logistically uh, an easier one to start with? How did you decide? So again, the same process goes for as you identify your partner in life. Yeah? So one is you kind of date many people. Uh, the other one is the traditional Indian way. You tell an auntie of yours, you tell a relative, you know what kind of person I am. Uh, can you look out for people uh, like that? Uh, the NGO which uh, initially uh, which uh, incubated grassroots is Watershed Organizing Trust. And uh, they have intervened in over 600 villages then. So this, this region was the closest towards Bombay and Pune and, and initial uh, assumptions were tourists are predominantly going to come only from Bombay and Pune for uh, a short holiday. And in this region, 25 villages, what we visited, uh, we shortlisted them and we spoke to the communities and uh, how do you say? It calls on to you. That's all I can say. You finally come to a village yeah, as you meet your partner. It calls on to you and then you have a leap of faith. Okay, and also an endeavor that is going to be profitable at some stage. How exactly is that going to happen? We're going to talk more to uh, Ainir and Uday when we come back after this very quick break. Day at Purushwadi, be prepared to be busy. You can go for a swim in the river, for long treks. You can indulge in activities like chopping wood, picking up huge boulders, or simply spending time with the villagers discovering their life. Plowing fields. Sounding right, or watching the village women cook for you. 
Or if you're really ambitious, you can also spread cow dung. I never thought I was going to have so much fun. Yesterday, seeing the kids uh, playing, like how it is from in my country and how it is here. Also, well, interacting with the family, well, having dinner and lunch. Here it's so quiet and peaceful, so I'm really enjoying this experience. The photo opportunities at Kurushwadi are so amazing because it's on top of a hill, but at the same time there's plenty of flat land. So I find that a village like this is a beautiful place for a person to come, spend a weekend away from the city life and, you know, mobile phones are off. Grassroots is also seeing interest from corporates, schools and even professionals. So how does the business model really work? For any opportunity to be truly sustainable, financial sustainability and financial viability is key. And with the vision of looking to move into multiple villages across India, uh, we had to look at scale. And if you're looking at scale, financial sustainability is key in this entire thing. Everybody understands money. Right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's great to live on love and fresh air, but you can only do it for so long. And uh, specifically with village communities, they need to be able to understand the financial, uh, financial viability of this entire thing. So, hence, we structured Grassroots as a private limited company. Uh, we predominantly partner with NGOs as a means of introducing ourselves to village communities. Okay. Uh, but after that, the entire intervention is based on the ability of the community to be able to serve tourism as, uh, uh, as an opportunity of livelihood. And it works in an entire commercial model after that. So, what are the opportunities? Opportunities for income for the villagers. What's the incentive? So villagers who here uh, own money through uh, three mode uh, of uh, three modes of service. First, uh, the women and youth work as guides, housekeepers, and cooks, and that's one uh, direct approach of, of of income. Secondly, is they are owners of the land uh, which uh, we put up a campsites on, so they earn money through rent uh, from the village community. Third, the village committee as a whole manages tourism inside, for which they get access to something called the village development fund. Now, these are direct forms of, of income. There's also another form of income which is coming into these villages, which is huge in terms of merchandising. Villagers are able to sell off their own produce uh, to, to tourists. So, be it their own farm produce, and which tourists love. So, be it their rice, their pulses, their own handicrafts. Honey. Their honey, which they get inside, and they're able to sell their own art forms. Uh, and they're able to get a much more uh, value for uh, than they actually go to the market. Now the villagers are also looking to be more entrepreneurial. They are actually looking uh, to set up small shops around the village uh, to, f to charge a fair price to tourists uh, and also maintain quality. So these all are different forms of avenues coming into uh, the village communities. So it's a very low capital requirement business, is that right? Yeah. So what are the kind of projections you have? Where do you want to take this? I mean, just you just take this particular village, for instance, and, and see the growth or, you know, taking off from that, what's the kind of potential you see over the next few years? You know, I think the real growth is going to have to come from scale because each village, by virtue of the amount of p tourists that it can handle, the amount of camps that we can build, um, has a limitation inherently. We are working quite hard with a very cool architecture firm to change our campsites and get the infrastructure up to up to par um, so that there's no questions asked about, about that aspect of it. So which is why the capital requirement, once that is put away, is going to be, it's going to be a homogeneous product across all our villages. But I think the real growth will come from scale, which is why we actively try and network with a lot of NGOs and try and see who's in a village that suits our requirements. And another way that we're trying to do it is find people who have land banks or have a plot of land near a rustic village and is willing to try and see if there's something that we can work with them towards. For this entire key, see, the entire key in, in what we call this is called as uh, sustainable uh, tourism occupancy. Uh, these villages are uh, have own life of their own, and we need to be able to balance the number of tourists who can come, uh, or outsiders who can come to a village without uh, uh, irreversibly uh, damaging uh, their entire. So we need, our footprints need to be reversible. And, and towards this takes into account how many people have been, uh, how many people have come in the previous year, what's happened to the change in, uh, in community with the income coming inside, uh, talking to the community, can they handle more and things like that. So as, as Uday said, the only, uh, for us to be able to grow is we have to be able to replicate this model into uh, several other villages. The other growth factor which comes in is also in terms of diversifying our product uh, portfolio. Yeah, and uh, and that's something that we've uh, we've actually been able to do. So we started off with tourism, where people come to these villages, uh, plow the land, uh, catch chickens, milk goats, yeah, uh, climb up a tree, okay, and it's fun. 
uh, when we've now got into educational programs uh, for uh, schools and uh, colleges wherein a lot of school children want to understand what's a gram panchayat. I mean, they've studied it in school, okay, but they finally come over here and see what's a gram panchayat. Uh, we've had international schools who come inside and you know what, it's great to learn about rice and we teach them the story of rice. People come and harvest rice. But the third thing and which is what we see is the biggest growth factor for us is what we call as a rural induction program or a rural understanding program uh, which we tap with FMCG companies uh, like, like Unilever, Marico, uh, be it banks, uh, international and Indian banks to get an understanding of what are the challenges and opportunities in rural India. So it's exciting but it is an uphill task. We're going to talk a little bit more to Ayanir and Odaya about some of the challenges that they've had to deal with when we come back. Grassroots has partnered with several NGOs in order to make its progress. NGOs such as Watershed Organization Trust and Population First have helped Grassroots make its connect to these villages. Other NGOs have worked as incubators for social enterprises, such as Unlimited India which helped it connect to peers in the field, or Dastra which has really guided it in terms of financial plans and funding. When Grassroots attended the Dastra Social Impact Program, while they had relationships with the communities they wanted to serve and a model in place, unfortunately the financial viability of that model was still at the very early stages. They were living month to month in terms of paychecks, in fact many of their staff had not been paid, and the communities that they were wanting to serve, the impact that they were creating through their current business model was still fairly limited. From joining the program, we helped them think about different strategies, both in terms of outreach to bring more tourists into rural India, as well as pricing options, enabling the community to create greater impact and grassroots initiatives to have more of a sustainable venture in place. While grassroots goal is to create impact within the community and be financially viable, they're very concerned about the impact tourism has on these villagers and villages in India. Therefore, Grassroot makes it a point to limit the number of tourists that come to these organizations and villages on a monthly basis, enabling the village to be a village for most of the time. True to its vision, Grassroot does maintain the sanctity of the village, allowing only a certain number of people at any given time. But it has plenty of other options for those willing to indulge in rural tourism. You know what, I was asking you earlier, in fact, that in the monsoons it must get really tough, uh, you know, to set up the campsite and so forth, but I think the nature of the business is seasonal, right? And you have lots of different activities happening in different uh, locations, different villages. So tell us, where should one go at which time of the year? Actually, I think that's one of the, the highlights of, and the most fun that we get out of organizing these as well, because every, there's always something or the other going on. So the simple ones are during the rice harvesting season, you can come and take part in, a, in the rice harvest. But since you brought up the monsoon, my favorite part of the year is when the fireflies are out. And that happens as it rains and stops. So it's actually probably our most, one of the most popular events that we host amongst the, the, through the calendar year. And if you look down here, the entire valley will have trees lighting up at sporadic intervals, just lit up completely with fireflies. There's literally millions, and so close to the big towns, I'd never imagined it. I came here, that's when I fell in love with this place, and I spoke to Aini. This is mostly in Maharashtra right now, or are you spreading across India, or eventually are looking to spread across? See, one of the other things that we do is, um, we've trained the villagers here, and now we're trying to inculcate this, this, this thing where one of the people from here goes and trains the other villages so that that kind of... So the network builds slowly so network, over time. Yes, so it is going to have to be through Maharashtra because our connections are here and our expertise is here. 
Um, so it, it is. From it the is sounds of it, there seems to be a lot to explore. For the entire thing, and, and the plan is to be in Maharashtra now for the next year or two, and then we're looking at, uh, our, our vision is to create 200 such villages across India, uh, to create a million livelihood opportunities every year, and to form uh, what we call as a triple bottom line in, in terms of socially sustainable, financially sustainable, and environmentally sustainable uh, venture for India. I knew you were telling me something, and it really stuck with me, and you said that uh, after doing an MBA, and I'm talking to two MBAs here, but... Uh, you said that uh, after that you think you're going to come into the world and uh, teach everyone how to do things. <laughs> so that's the, you know, so that's, uh, so when you, when you come out when, you, when you're young, you come out with this, you know, confidence, which to a great extent is a pseudo, an untested confidence. You know, yes, you're going to kind of change the world. And, you know, you're going to teach the world so much. And one of the things that struck me most is when I've come to these communities, and I'm talking about below power line communities, uh, uh, people who would not even understand uh, or maybe even read and write or different levels of this, but I've learned much more from them, okay, about everything in life, how to lead life, how to be good human beings and how to be one with nature and one with yourself. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on the show. It was a pleasure spending time here in Purushwari, seeing, of course, uh, all the work that you're doing and also just uh, enjoying uh, the view. It was fantastic. Thanks so much. Thank you. Hope you all enjoy the show. That's where we leave it on this episode of uh, Down to Earth and hope you manage to make a trek down here sometime soon. Thanks for watching.